We're live. Hello, everyone, and uh, thanks for coming back to Lessons from the Street with me, Bill Borman, and I'm delighted to introduce my guest, who's over to your right on your screen, a parent who will tell you a little bit more about herself. I'm a big fan of her work. Um, Karen is a muralist, a, a street artist, a watercolour painter, um, a general protester on the street who's just the type of person who I like to, to, to hear about. Um, I've got to give a special shout out when we start, as long as her mum has reminded, has remembered to log in um, to Poppy, so hi Poppy. Um, I hope you enjoy today's show and learn a little bit about watercolours. But you, you haven't tuned in to listen to me. You've tuned in to listen to a parent. So, a parent, tell us um, watercolours. What with all the things that you do, murals, spray, graffiti, <laughs> which made you, made you think, yeah, watercolours. This is the right thing to talk about today. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Bill, for having me today. Um, um, I wanted to show you uh, today what I've been doing lately during the lockdown. I went back to uh, watercolors. I've always liked uh, watercolors, but um, especially because of the gradients and the different tones you can get and the different um, um, artistic possibilities that you, you can have with watercolors. Um, but they are a little bit tricky. Um, because what the colors are very fast, but the things and the tricks that I'm going to show you today, they're really, really easy. We are going to be using the splashes and the drops uh, from, from splashes the- Splashes and drops. Do you mean we can make a mess yeah. and it's okay? To create uh, today. And so it's going to be super fun and super easy, a little bit messy though. So that's why I cover my whole table on paper. <laughs> so if you haven't covered, covered your, your your table in paper um, tell your mum to send emails to me and I'll take <laughs> responsibility I'll take responsibility for any mess and, and not and not apparent so apparent when did you first start painting with watercolors how, how old were you and when did you start I was little, but I've always been on and off. Even when I was in secondary school, um, I, I, I had a time where I was really, really into watercolors, and I all the time, all my art was watercolor. And then I stopped. And then um, I came back again, like about three or four years ago. And, and I left it because I wanted to do more like spray paint or the, or the techniques I'm using oils at the moment. But with the lockdown, somehow I saw my box of watercolors there and I wanted to use it. So that's, that's how I retaking all of that again. But yeah, yeah. You've told me that you found watercolors quite therapeutic, quite relaxing. Yes. Um, during this time when everybody's locked in and not able to get out with their friends and, and so on. So tell me, what is it about watercolours when you've got all these other uh, mediums available? What is it about watercolours that makes you really, uh, really uh, relax and turn out? Yeah, because I find like missing all the colours, especially um, using just the uh, drops and the splashes it makes you very, very happy because you just uh, very quickly um, putting all, all the water in the paper and you're creating something. Like for example, I can show you, um, I did this one the other day. And um, so when I did all of these strips with all the colors, it was really, really nice, relaxing. And it's not, it's not really important to get it right because it's not really right, isn't it right or wrong? And um, so I think that's the, you know, therapeutic part or you just using drips from like to use it in a design so you can really get the effects like this with all the gradients and all the different colors. And again, there's no perfection here and it's very relaxing and therapeutic because of that, because they makes you, give you a sense of achievement in here. Do that sense of achievement. 
Yes. You did, did that sense of achievement. So tell us again, you said something that I think is quite interesting. This is something I always have with art, is I'm always frustrated that what I see in my mind isn't what I see on the paper. And you said you can make mistakes, you can do what you want. Tell me tell me a bit more about that and what you mean by that. Yeah, because for example, I can show you actually. Um, I wanted to use two different approaches. The first approach is just very simple. You just get a piece of paper. Um, I'm using very small paper at the moment, as you can see, because I don't have that much supplies. So it doesn't have to be um, big paper or watercolor paper. It can be card as well. And then you will get a brush, a thick brush. You can get this one. <laughs> um, just dip it into the water, you know. That that's the first approach I'm using, and I I've done some pieces with that. Do you want to just move your camera down just a little bit so we can see the painting? Yes, I think that's better, isn't it? Yeah, that's better. That's cool. Um, I'm just stopping, you know, with water all around. Be generous, but don't drown the paper. Then just or choose some colors, the colors that you like, that inspires you, that, you know, motivates you. What color does it motivate to you, Bill? So you're making the paper wet first, but yes. not soaking. Exactly. Um, I'm choosing red. Tell me a color. Blue. Blue. I love blue. Indigo. Yeah. Just make sure that you are tapping. I find that when I do the tapping, Instead of like scratching the paper because you can lift the paper, just tapping and putting colors all around. I'm gonna be using different uh, tones of blue. Any other colors that you like? Red. Red. Angry red. Yes, this one is very shiny red. I really love it. If you don't have watercolors, you can um, use all the paint. You can use, I don't know, um, uh, even um, acrylics and you quarter them down, or you can even use coffee. And I like putting some yellow because it's very so you use coffee. You use coffee for paint. Uh, not myself, but there are a lot of artists out there that they use coffee to water down the paper and to wash it down and then they can do a design on top as we are going to be doing. So as you can see, then you can use, and you get the same brush and you splash. Yeah. yeah. Some drips around, maybe we can use some orange. You can do it like this. Yeah, or you can use a tooth brush. Yeah, and just with a little bit of water and just splash it. Well, it's getting really nice. So yeah, sort of like this. And then if you turn it around and then it's just dripping down, it's fine. And maybe on the other side as well, if you want to do that. So basically let it dry first. And then when it's dry, you will have something like this. Okay, something that doesn't have a shape, you don't know what it is, but maybe you look at it and you can start seeing things in it. Like, I don't know, if you see monster, I can see a little oh. bit of uh, What oh. can you see? He can see a heart. Good. You artists are mad. <laughs> exactly. So, when it's dry, then go and design what you can see. So get a pencil and then I can see here, Ike, he says that he can see a heart. So we're gonna be drawing a heart. Actually, um, do it with a pencil first, but I can go with a pen. This is faster. Okay, so that's going to be one of the approaches. You design on top. Uh, remember, you don't have to be keeping in line, you don't have to, it's just very free. I 
go here. Ike, who is uh, my most advanced student. <laughs> If you are doing it at home, um, please, please share the results. We would like to see it. And where can someone post it? On your Instagram? Yes, for example, in my Instagram, my Instagram is Aparan, A double P A R A N. So that's it, very simple. I'm going to do Arabic calligraphy on top. Okay. EK is going to be doing some Arabic calligraphy on top. Thanks. That's nice. Yeah, you can let it dry. Be <laughs> careful. And at the end, I can show you as well what EK has been doing. These are the letters for love. Love yeah. in Arabic. Love no. letters. Yeah. Okay. Two letters. <laughs> No, no, the other way, the other way. Oh, sorry. No, 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 like this. No, the other way. Keep going, keep turning, keep turning. Yeah, like that. But it's dripping. <laughs> We've got it. That's cool. It's dripping, now I can see. Now, let it uh, dry a little bit, class, and no. then... This is your student. This is <laughs> proper class. I have the love. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So you continue working on it this. and then I'm going to show you as well some of the um, drawings I've been doing on the splashes. Like for example, I've been doing some eyes, I'm using some, some tangled symbols oh. and more eyes, you can see some, some more here. So if anyone has any questions or comments while we're going, just put them where on the button where it says Q and A. Put your questions and answers down. Oh yeah, that would be nice to to nice you, to have some questions and know that you're here. Questions, some comments while we are, you know, continue our designs. Um, you see, it's all about like when you get the splashes dry and think about okay what can i design what what inspires me um that's also you know the therapeutic part we were talking about so thinking about your role just thinking about what you're gonna what you're gonna uh rule what you're going to illustrate how you might do it. exactly you might say oh well i can see something abstract so do some symbols abstract symbols yeah i've noticed you're using a pen now over your watercolor um yes what else do you use if you're using kind of mixed medium if you're using art and a that's a normal kind of pen i guess yeah. it is um a marker which is permanent and it's water based but it doesn't go with the water and so it stays even if um, the water is dry or still a little bit dry you can start painting on top um, so yeah these are molotov but postcard got them as well so there's a lot of labels down out there that you can use um, some of the designs or, or things like that you can use even for cars. Uh, I made yesterday some cars. I'm going to show you. Um, these are some cars I made yesterday for the um, Earth Day. So I was using some of these which are concentrate. Uh, watercolor. So you dilute them into water, add more water if you want them paler or less water if you want them really, really dark. So I use them as a base and then I use the markers to do the message. And I did this one as well. So if you need to do a card now that can't really go to many many shops 
they might be selling um, that many cars. Here they are. So that's very good for children as well. If you prefer to make a card with your design, that's good as well. Yeah, so tell us about your card design, then. Tell us a little bit about the cards that you've got there. You said that's the card. birthday, so I'm really interested in knowing a little bit more about them. Um, Mm, I'm using, these are not made out of watercolor um, paper, they're just simple card. So again, you can paint also with watercolors in simple card paper. Yeah. And um, that is really, really easy. There's all the possibilities as well. Um, like for example, you can use collage on them. Yeah. And Yes, I left uh, some yesterday um, to do a collage. Like I did this background, I wasn't very happy with it um, because I was using the concentrated uh, watercolor. Then I thought it was too much. But then I, thought I, could, I can use it to make a card. And I had some cutouts of different symbols. And I would like you to let me know which one shall I use? Because I want to make a, a car for Bill. So which one shall I use? Shall I use this one like this? Like a sun? And then say, thank you, Bill, here? Yeah. Shall I use some other more funny and playful symbols? Like, like a, this. A Batman. Yes. Yeah, with a coin. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> sort of yeah. coin. Or we can put other things. We can put flowers. What do you want? It's your car, so you choose. <laughs> I like the Pac-Man. I like the Pac-Man and the coin. Ah, okay. So we'll do that, okay? Good. So I'm continuing with my heart. And then around it, I will probably draw um, some centangle um, symbols that I very, very like very much. <laughs> I can see Karim is letting his paper dry. <laughs> he has done loads, I think. <laughs> so what kind of symbols do you normally draw if you're drawing? I like uh, drawing arrows uh, in the hearts and, and also triangular shapes, geometry, like for example here, I might. You like my abstracts? Oh, that's very nice. I'll show you what the abstract. Um, work. Let's see how your student is getting on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's really nice colors. It's a forest. <laughs> it's a forest. You can draw, you can write a message later on for the forest. No, I'm going to draw some trees. Earth Day, which was yesterday. Which was yesterday. <laughs> Yes, definitely. Different to a usual Earth Day. Sorry? Different to a usual Earth Day. Um, I know, I just, um, you know, was drawing on some cars yesterday. Also thinking about what work I've done in the streets where, you know, um, I was giving a message to, to, to the environment, for the environment, etc. So I've been doing a little bit of that yesterday. And also, these days I'm going to be doing a wall in the garden with some 
uh, recycled gold um, pans that I've got and they've got like a tiny bit left so I'm going to try to do um, an, a wall dedicated to earth and mother earth and environmentally um, environmental issues as well. So what sort of art would you normally do if you're doing something out on the street or you're doing something that's a protest? Um, yeah. Like, for instance, uh, though you had some art up at Extinction Rebellion and other places, what, think, what kind of things do you do? Well, tell us a bit about your art. Yeah, um, as you said, mostly uh, the messages in my pieces are environment, women issues as well mostly women mostly women, mostly women. and gender equality or, and um, also like self-realization and empowering um women uh, women <laughs> yeah <laughs> mostly women as karim said mostly women you like my tree <laughs> I love your tree. My abstract tree. Thank you. The room has an abstract tree. You are there getting some colors and trying, you know, to do some, um, you know, some work with it, with them and show me, of course, later. I want to see them. I like also drawing spirals, although I haven't been drawing that many of them. Um, these days, but yeah, some more hearts around and brains. I like them chains. And I did this because um, I watched uh, Samo drawing his hands, and I thought they were really, really wicked. So I tried to do a similar thing. And using watercolors as well with the techniques that he was using in his um, video the other day in his workshop. So I made these ones out of several. A galaxy as well. So you can see, you know, stars. Any motif that inspires you, basically. So this um, approach is just using, just simply using splashes, um, drips if you want to, and then you draw on top, okay? So it's kind of like... What if you're not very good at drawing? Say that again? What if you're not very good at drawing, like me? No, no, I no. Have to do That's not true. Everyone is good at drawing. The other day, I did another one that, that was really crazy. That was, it's just only a single, a single line, single line going over and over and over. It's not perfect because it's not really, there's not really a balance. And just using uh, my hand going over and over, just not even looking where, where I was drawing. And then, I used some acrylic on the hand, watercolors for the background, and that was that. It's just one single line. So I think even like this, which is not perfect, aesthetically it can have a you know flow. So it doesn't matter if you're not good at drawing, you can do a house. You can do a house in single line, go over and over and over and get this character, which is like it's not perfect, but I mean effective aesthetically yeah i don't i don't believe in uh, you know things that they are um figuratively perfect i've done some figurative work with watercolors as well like for example i did this one for a poster uh, it was for a carnival uh, back in the canary islands in spain so i'm from the canary islands and um, so, yes, but I think um, just using the splashes is more rewarding somehow. Which island are you from? Which of the Canary Islands? I am from Lanzarote. Lanzarote, I know it. I've been there a few times. Yeah? 
Okay. A few times. Yes, it's, days are, it's that, the, the short black and white houses. Yes. It's all houses by the artist. Yeah, uh, Manrique. Yeah. Uh, Manrique. Manrique was um, a friend of my dad. Uh, my dad used to work for him. And yeah. uh, he, he was a very nice person. Unfortunately, um, he um, passed away quite young. But he was very inspiring person for everyone, and um, he did a lot of work, artistic work in the island. The island is very small, but you can feel his influence. It's really, really good artist. With a very big volcano. Yes. With a very big volcano. <laughs> so the second approach um, I want to show you is the opposite, it's the other way around. So you get paper and you think of a design, something that you can do very well. As you said, like, it might be, yeah, you want to uh, paper as well? Something that you can draw. So you get pencil first and then draw something. I draw, I drew a finger, yeah, a pointy finger. And I'm going to go over it with the marker. Like, for example, this one, no, it's too small, but you know, as you can see, that they've got different numbers. Depends on how thick you wanted to do it. I wanted to start very thick, but I can go around it a couple of times with a thinner line and mix. It makes it not as perfect as this one. I quite like doing that lately. So you have to think of something that inspires you, that you want to draw. Maybe you can look on your phone, find, um, you know, a photograph by any photographer that you admire and try to reproduce it or a symbol. I wanted to do this finger and then put something like in the finger saying NHS. NHS. Yes. And then my idea is like from the finger, um, there's going to be some uh, splashes, colorful splashes coming out as if it was uh, like a sort of ray energy. Um, something happy for these times. Why are you going to be drawing? My hands. Ah, I like that. You I like hands. No? <laughs> So. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, we need to see this. This definitely sounds like something. Yeah. Like oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. I thought you couldn't make any mistakes. But everything was good. <laughs> It has, that's what I say. It doesn't apply to me. <laughs> In case it's different. Very sweet. It doesn't apply to me. <laughs> I'm the exception. I'm the exception. <laughs> I think it's sweet, but he didn't like it. I he mean, you don't have to like it, of course. I haven't, I haven't drawn anything for like, I don't know how many years. <laughs> No, to draw something else. Not good. So how do you draw a finger then? When do you start? Um, um, just look at my finger and I try to, um, to follow 
you know, like all the things around it, you know, like the sides. I, I do a sketch it first. Do it with a pencil first, always, and you're allowed to use a rubber, why not? It's like if correcting it, it's going to make you feel better. Yeah. You know? I use uh, the rubber loads. It's true that when I did um, this workshop where, where with the hand that I show you, um, it was about the opposite things. It was about being proud of not, you know, like if you make mistakes, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, more or less, you can continue with the pen later on to do more details if you want to. Because, as I said before, this pen, um, it doesn't matter if you go over it with, with water. Then again, you get your brush, your favorite brush. The, I, I like this thick brush because it's got round um, pointy point. So I quite like that. Be generous with the water. Remember that you don't really have to have lots of watercolors. If you go to the pound shop, well, the pound shop might be closed at the moment. The pound shop but, is open. Oh, it's open. You see? Pound shops. But you need to socially distance in the shop. Keep your distance in the shop. That's really important. And follow the signs. Yeah. And so what colour shall we put coming out from the finger, the NHS finger? NHS blue. NHS blue. You can try to trace it, try to, to do something very like a house, yeah? The tree. Palm tree. A palm tree is good. Okay, so I'm going to put a lot of blue, but there may be different tones as well to make it really interesting. Also, remember that we are tapping on it. We are not dragging the, pa the paint, although, I mean, if you do the dragging the paint, it's, that would be another technique. And in this one, for example, what I did was like I let the paint fall. So vertically, and the paint was falling, and it got this effect. And then I put it this this side, this way, this way, that way. So it went all around covering the paper. <laughs> My students giving up. Give up. Come on, students. Yeah, and then we let it dry, and then we can draw some more uh, symbols going around. But, um, another interesting thing about this is like when you finish and and then you think, oh, well, I don't quite like the splashes on this side. So then you can top it up. You can go over it um, several times. And the more you do it, the colors are going to be more shiny and harder. And uh, that's the way I do it. And normally I let it dry a little bit and then I top it up more like that. Okay. So that's more or less how I do it. Like for example, this one, the one that I did before starts to dry. But as you can see, the paint is a little bit fussy so I can go over it. So I'm gonna let my NHS one dry and then I'm going to go 
over the other one. I can use the colors that you told me that they were red. It's like when, when you're trying to create a little galaxy, but very, very colorful. So you could let your imagination run wild with whatever you want to paint. Exactly. I think, for example, I, I was looking at Ike and the way he was playing it, um, and I think he encountered a problem, which is he was dragging the, the brush all around the, uh, the um, paper, and the paper started to lift. And so that's why it's important not to do that, just stop. So that's when the paper starts to lift up. Yeah. Just because um, it's like you are scratching the paper. Yeah. Another important thing that a lot of watercolor artists do is that they use masking tape to stick it uh, down. I don't do that because I like, it, you know, lifting it and splashing on it and then let it dry and then coming back to it again. So I don't do that very much, but if, if it helps you, you can, you can, why not? So I made it very colorful now and I'm gonna let it dry a little bit more. So while you are working on this, you can have different projects at the same time. So um, now I've got two. Um, I started this in the morning because I had this a little bit dry. So I'm going to continue with that. I can do more designs. What else do you want me to draw? On there? Yes. Uh, I think it looks like a space island. So maybe something space. <laughs> a rocket or Futuristic. A Martian. A Martian. Maybe a Martian. Yeah. An alien coming out from somewhere. <laughs> yeah, so going around it, I'm going to use a thinner pen so I can kind of like go around. I quite like doing that lately, make it imperfect. Some artists, they say that they like destroying what they make to kind of like start and redoing it again, and then they are happy. Uh, then if you have heard that, um, I found it pretty shocking at the beginning when some, I see some artists doing a beautiful piece and then they destroy it, and then they kind of like remake it and then here it is, it's super, super good, but like totally different, you know? And, um, but I think now I understand this approach. And it's very fun. Lando. Somebody's walked their dog twice, I expect. Say that again? Somebody's walked their dog twice or gone out for another job. Mm. I live near a fire station, so that probably, well, it's the norm, isn't it? Fire engines all the time. All the time, yeah. Excellent. 
And then you can use some markers on it as well. <laughs> Thank you for the coffee. And I'm going to use some perhaps um, pink. And um, I quite like doing my triangles with markers. Yeah, so we have different projects running at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So we have two projects going. Or even more, but because if you think about it, I haven't gone with your car. So let's go with your car now. You're going art crazy. <laughs> BC. So think about if you have any of your work um, dry and then you can think about what can I draw. If you are using or you are doing a um, sketchbook, go to your sketchbook if you don't feel very confident and think about what things you can reproduce back again on your sketchbook. And yeah, so the letters for the thank you maybe we can use let me see okay mm. i think we're just coming up to the end of the show so if we could <laughs> have a look at your work and see yeah. If anyone has any questions, put them in the question box or anything you want to say um, to a pan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I'm very happy with how this one it, it's, um, it, it came up. Um, I might do some more symbols on it just because. Well, the it looks like a person with sunglasses, you know. Oh, interesting. Maybe, yes. Yeah, with like a <laughs> ram's horn in the top of the head. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should do a heart with sunglasses. Yeah. And then this one probably I will pop it up a little bit and do some writing on the finger, NHS, around here. Yeah, I really like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's still drying. And... This one, I'm going to try to finish it quickly. So it's good for everyone to do plenty of time to do it at the moment while you're at home. But in all of your homeschooling, the science, your math, and everything else, don't forget your art, it's the creativity. Yes. I mean, the children, they are being given uh, work in art. Yeah. This they what to do. Um, I know many parents are very creative 
and they're doing a lot of creative projects with them. It's really exciting. Now, this is your thank you card. Thank you very much. I love that. <laughs> I'll it from you once the coronavirus is over, once the social isolation is over. So thank you. Can you your address so I can post it? <laughs> yes, I'll send that down to you. Thank you so much, Apparent. Thank you. Uh, and uh, so thanks for coming in. Where can anyone see your art? Where's the best place to see some of your other stuff? Um, in my webpage, uh, which is um, three double juice at apparent with double p dot com and also in my instagram apparent double p and in the street hopefully and in the street. we look forward to see it so thank you for coming on today's show next week we're going to be looking at graffiti and name writing so make sure you remember to tune back in maybe you'll tune back in apparent and, and yeah. thank you for sharing your art it's been thank great having you here i hope you thank enjoy you Practice. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye bye.